His nose should pant. And his lips should curl. Cheek should flame. And his brow should furl. His bosom should heave. And his heart should glow. And his and fist is never ever ready for a knockdown. Knock oh, oh, this is why music cl classes don't work <laughs> online. <laughs> totally true. I thought I was on beat. But I thought we I know I was great. terrible. <laughs> I feel like we should just see shanty it. Everybody pick I up. I love how we all drank after that. Oh like, wait. Yeah. Good well, job thirsty, sucking at life. Oh. A for effort. Guys, you don't even know that. was Hawk's was idea and I liked it. Me too. Thank you, thank you. And greetings to all. We hope 2021 is going well for you. Welcome to episode 16 of A Strange New Pod. We are live on Twitch and YouTube, so please keep the questions and comments coming all night. I'm the man with more knowledge than the spear data. And your show's host tonight, Lieutenant Hawk. Joining me as always is our Star Wars captain, Julian Brown, the Borg Queen of Puns, Brittany, Anson Brittany, the man who keeps our hailing frequencies open, Rear Admiral Eric, and Supreme Emperor, Overlord of Risa, Praetor Prime of Romulus, Aaron. <laughs> Glory to you and your houses. Glory as to always you. A big... Yeah. It'd be funnier as if always every episode a... got longer. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the name. <laughs> <laughs> I like hearing what it what it's going to be every time. That's it's really exciting. We need to throw new things in there. We do. <laughs> we do. So, as always, a big thank you to Sam Dillard and Samo Studios for our Trektastic intro and outro music. Uh, on, a, on, a, on a side, on a side, I was going to put the bacon yes. of baconators for you, Aaron, <laughs> and then I was like, oh, she's a vegetarian. That's not going to work out. <laughs> <laughs> that might have made it even better because her mirror her part is probably not a vegetarian. That's fair. There you go. <laughs> I am dressed as Mirror uh, Culver, so. Amazing. Culver vibes. Awesome. I'll throw in uh, Galaxy's Donja Champion. Yes. You play Donja. I'd <laughs> add Long May She <laughs> Alamorain. <laughs> Alamorain. Oh, I hate it. I hate it so much. <laughs> so what do we have in the news department? Okay, so in the news department, we have a lot. I'm not going to go through it all, but I am going to go through the important stuff real quick. So um, if you're not on our Discord and you're watching live, um, you probably haven't seen this yet. So uh, next Saturday, a week from today, that is going to be our very last live stream on a Saturday. So uh, yeah, I know goodbye Saturdays, but it's it's for the best. Um so starting on uh, Thursday, January 21st, all of our episodes will be live streamed on the Thursday of each week um, with that podcast being released on the following day. So Thursday live, Friday podcast. Um, so on top of that, um, our review episodes in the form of what we call bonus pods, those are going away. All of our, our episodes are going to now just fall into our main podcast category. So they're not actually going away. They're just being reformatted. Um, they'll fall into our main podcast Gordian numbering system. And then um, when there is Star Trek on TV, we're not going to, you know, go crazy and do two episodes a week. That's going to be our focus. We're just going to focus on the Star Trek that we have available to us. So um, we do have some really awesome stuff, though, planned for real bonus pods that aren't just, you know, review episodes. So stay tuned for all that. We had a great 2021 planning meeting on Thursday. So we're super stoked for that. Um, and this is important for our Patreon collective. So since you guys are going to be losing uh, early access to the podcast, because it's just coming out right away, um, the last episode of each month of Strange New Pod moving forward is going to be a Patreon collective voted upon topic. And the person that came up with that topic is going to get to come on and talk about the topic with us. So that's, I think, a really cool perk to take the place of another perk. Speaking of perks, real quick, this isn't in the news, but all of your awesome... You can't really see them that well, and it's going to spaz out on me if I try to put it on the screen, but your your two 2020 Patreon Collective pins have shipped, so expect those sometime soon. USPS is not exactly the most reliable these days, but they are shipped out to you. We hope you love them. And then, uh, let's see, real quick, um, that's actually the, the main news. We have some really awesome episodes planned for you coming up through March. We've We've got a pretty great timeline. We're going to be wrapping up uh, the TNG movie deep dive next week or two weeks, two weeks with Nemesis. And then um, we're going to move over to the Calvin verse. So that's pretty exciting. And that's, that's all I got. You should join our discord and check out all the rest of the news there. I don't need to ramble on. So uh, Hawk back to you. <laughs> Thank you, Julian. 
uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to like our, our upcoming year. I think we've got some really good content coming along. In the yeah. absence of new shows, until we get those new shows, we don't know when, but we intend to keep this going every week. Uh, so for our Patreon plug and that, uh, who would like to tell people how they can help us support our show and join our collective? Uh, Aaron. Okay, so if you join our Patreon, you're going to get a bunch of cool benefits like gift making with Julian, which has been really fun. We've had a lot of our patrons make a bunch of cool uh, gifts that have shown up on Instagram and a lot of on Twitter, actually, that have been really fun. So he'll teach you how to do that. And you'll also, if you're at the Cerritos uh, lounge level, you'll get to do some fun stuff with me. And we do this uh, Drunk Space Nine where I teach you a new cocktail every single month. This is a little little thing I made up today. And Julian and I host a podcast with the patrons. So you can join in on the podcast if you want or just listen to it. We do a live Discord and we chat it out. And we make this special drink. Uh, we send you a video on how to make this special drink every month. So that way, during the actual watching of the movie, I don't know if I'm making any sense. Uh, you, we all, we're all drinking the same thing and it's a lot of fun. And for January, we're actually sending out a special ingredient to all of our patrons. So you get fun benefits. We send you cool stuff. I mean, it's a good time. Excellent. I agree. It's absinthe. <laughs> it's not absinthe. It's not. Is it real absinthe? If that <laughs> happened, you'd be absinthe from the review. Uh, I'll, I'll you give would you do, a like, live chat. Oh, do, you guys, do you guys want like a, a little mini preview of what it is? It is right next to me. Mm. She's going to give a little like tease, a little. I just got Mariner's fro. That was Ready? all. I'm <laughs> only going to do it real quick. Just so you can. It's that was actually it's really cool. Slow. It's wormwood, <laughs> which is part of absinthe. It's not wormwood. <laughs> There's no absinthe. <laughs> no. Just a hint of that lauded. I thought that it's, might be one of those um those uh, Riza statues, the baby Riza yeah, statue. Yeah, right. Oh, like statue. Yeah. It's, it's actually crystallized dilithium that you're gonna put straight into your drink. Ooh. Don't put any uh, baby kelpians around it though. Mm. Oh yeah. Hey, do you think the, do you think the Ryzen gift shop offers like a a, a Horga keychain? Goddamn they right. They offer. I think everything. they did have stuff like that. Erin's yeah. been there. She's seen it. Oh I, well, they have. There's um. On Instagram, there's a, a an actual the shops at Rise. I think they actually tweeted us out or um, Instagram. They they talked about one of our episodes this week. Do you guys didn't see that? I'll send it to you. It was cool. It should be called the Riza and Fall of Star Trek merch. Yeah, yeah. I I listen. I I bought a couple of their things. Um, I really liked some of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's an endorsement if ever I've heard it. Some of their stuff is great. <laughs> Other I stuff, like meh. Cool. Well, we'll have to check. I out. said nothing negative. <laughs> True. Oh, man. True. Uh, so, moving on to our Patreon plug, uh, would somebody like to thank uh, our, our patrons? Uh, Me. Oh, Brittany. Thank you. <laughs> well, the kids in school. Me. Yeah, I I let you have the other one. So. Thank you to our awesome patrons collective, like Simon Stager. Stager? Stager? Stager. Yeah, I don't know why Stager. I ever thought that. I say it all the time. Because Eric says Stager and, and okay. Hawk says Stager. That makes it's the Canadian in us. It is. It's been so long since I read it, I second guess myself. <laughs> Simon Stager, Jeff Reeve, Mariah Gossett, Mag Mag, Mag, Mag. and Bradley, Mag Mag. Butted Giraffe, Brandon Feltzer, Mitch Thatcher, Rob, Jen Stein, Tina Alexander, what? No, no. Are you her. making it again? Okay. And I was like, her. why are you shaking your head? I was like, you know why I said, I, I was like, there's no have way I said a last name. Alexander wrong. <laughs> no. Rob doesn't need one. <laughs> Rob. Rob. <laughs> Please, Jen, like, write into us and that and, uh, and tell us the, pr the correct pronunciation. Oh, no. Oh, they, they, they know what it is. They know it's right. Family. Julian. Family. Julian. Family. Family. <laughs> it's Jen. <laughs> her name is Geneva. Geneva. It's Jen. Jim. Eric's just awesome. an a hole. It, I don't know. It's pronounced. It's pronounced Nicolaj. <laughs> Ni no, no, it's Nicolaj. Nicol and it's Nicolaj. a hard. It's a hard word. I understand. Nicolaj. <laughs> nine nine. Tweet nine nine. Back to what Tweet I was notes. saying. I'm gonna do it one more time just in case because I don't know what happened. Tina Alexander, Joe Saparito, Noe Santos, and Kenghui. 
and we didn't have time to add it at the end because we've been crazy trying to get the stream up but uh takako who's watching on our tri- our twitch right now um they just joined as well they were at the one dollar level and now they're at the two dollar level so they get a shout out hey, thanks this. for joining us we all, love because you, I, she, all because she needed to update her address to um to get a pin I'll and be- they're like all right we'll just do the two dollars like, <laughs> so thank you why not yeah and that's there you go there's more benefits you get cool stuff like that in the mail and it helps us to be able to do these t- things too to order the pins and like get all these cool things and to the run pins the show. are freaking awesome they really yeah. are uh, julian you seem to have a pin i do i do badgy on badgy oh no Amazing. oh my god that's that, that means i'm getting badgy. murdered before the end of this episode yep he has no arms and he's on fire. You're actually oh, dead no. already. Badgie's just inside of you animating your body. <laughs> like weekend at Bernie's? Off. <laughs> yeah. Why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? He's already dead. <laughs> <laughs> Father. <laughs> Bernie just melted into the, the straw I behind did. her. Um, It's like finding an android in a haystack, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> fucking kid. <laughs> the fucking Anakin Skywalker kid. Yeah. Oh. And Shall any- we move on to our strange new loop for this week? Shall we? Oh, God. <laughs> Can I tell you guys, listening to the pod because I wasn't feeling well the other day and hearing that sound, it's a lot less jarring when you're not wearing the headphones. I was like, oh, that wasn't that bad. Hmm. But here it's like, I've been stabbed. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's badgy sound effect when he's about to put a, a, a ice pick <laughs> through his earlobe. Oh, what's what's a what's a busted eardrum between great podcast between mates like yeah, you? There you exactly. go. Exactly. Yeah, it's worth it. So, I wear it like like badgy with honor, a badgy of honor, rather. <laughs> so our strange new loop this week, uh, in honor of Star Trek Insurrection. Uh, with centuries at your disposal to pursue a personal interest or artisanship, what would you guys devote your time to? I would go to the Star Trek, um, go to um, Starfleet Academy and hang out with Busby and learn to garden in that beautiful uh, garden. Because I've been there because it's 20 minutes from where I live now. And it's this beautiful Japanese garden. But in quarantine, I've been slowly teaching myself how to garden. You guys don't see it, but I'm like surrounded by plants like a psychopath. So I would want <laughs> Busby to teach a me well how, oxygenated to, how to garden yeah. and like get really good. And just I would do that forever and become <laughs> the, the most masterful of master gardeners. And don't forget real quick, Twitch, if you want uh, us to know what you would do as well. And a YouTube. Tell us. Hmm. So that's what I do. I like that, Aaron. That's an excellent pursuit. I would, I, I thought about this. This is actually the easiest Stranger Loop I've ever had to think of because um, I was a theater major in college. I think like Eric, I think you majored in theater, uh, right? No, I, I minored in it, so. Minored in it. I, was I, I kept on switching majors, so. You know, yeah, it's, it's one of I didn't those, finish like... college, so I didn't get to get my theater major. Uh, I, I love acting. I've always wanted to act more. And uh, yeah, it's so easy for me. I would just, I would continue to become and master my craft as an actor. An a ma- actor. A master thespian? You have to turn around like Jean Luc. Acting. Acting. <laughs> Acting. <laughs> Very Sean Connery, actually. Another work. Does, does, this, does this have to be in the Star Trek uh, universe? Or can no, it just be? It's just. No, it's just like I was thinking about the Baku and that and the John Luke admiring that tapestry and that and her saying they work 30 years in that as apprentice. Uh, let's see. Well, I know it wouldn't take long to take over the capital, so I think uh, I don't need to spend that much time oh. on that. But if Yo, we... all the Americans got triggered. We <laughs> all were so like so traumatized, man. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but um, oh, wasn't... <laughs> thinking of the future, me and Hawk have talked about this a lot. We don't. We're not sure if uh, we're gonna go towards the Star Trek type uh, future, but we're definitely going towards the Expanse type future. Oh. So oh, I would, I would join the Mars people, and uh, you know, join the MCR. Yeah. I right. mean, you can. My chemical romance about... still exists. In space. <laughs> <laughs> that reunion's insane. Oh wait, wait, is it MRC? I did it wrong. 
I want to know what the hell is going on. <gasps> Did you hear that um, Elon Musk is selling off all of his possessions because he's like really determined to go start this colony on Mars? And he says that he wants to put like a million people on Mars by like 20, 45 or 50. And he's all like, okay, but if you can't afford it, then we'll finance it for you. And when you get there, you'll just work it off. And somebody was like, that's indentured <laughs> servitude. That's called slavery. slavery. <laughs> yeah. So um, you the, the expense, the expense. <laughs> yeah. It's exactly what you're saying. That's what, cause I'm Elon like, Musk you know what? Is like evil. <laughs> It would be dude. oh he's turning into yeah it's not it, no he's, he always was he's he he's almost he full good. Kanye at this point like his I just, dad you know. owned an emerald fucking mine and he likes to pretend like he Listen, grew up as some like I did not know that on, whatever <laughs> yeah I he's work in fucking rich he's I work in a jewelry Stark. store I know exactly how that shit goes <laughs> he's Lex Luthor he is Lex Luthor blood diamonds and shit and Jimon Hanso's not even there like we're not he has winning more money yeah. than sense. But I mean, listen, we're getting great things from him. It's nice to see, uh, you know, um, all people of going the to space safely. people going to space yeah. safely. Uh, but yeah, who knows where this is going to go in the future? But you know what? It's all crazy right now. So anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You guys, I, we're just going to keep making booze. <laughs> I want to know what that is. Anyway, uh, I, I like Rob's on uh, Twitch. I don't know if we want to do that before. Uh, yeah, 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 sure. You want to read it? Absolutely. Eric, me? Oh, me. Okay. Uh, so Rob on Twitch says, I'd be a forever student, I think. Degree after degree. Taking my time because I'd be passed out drunk on the beach all the time. I like it. I like it. Yeah. I like that, There's too. also an earlier one that you guys can read. Oh. Is there? I thought there was. No, there's not. Oh, it's just that one. Never mind. Um, so can I go? <laughs> this will be interesting. Oh, honestly. I thought you went already. Sorry, my bad. No. I went to go do it like three times, but it was never a good chance. <laughs> so anyway, my initial thought was uh, woodworking, but that's too easy. Mm -hmm. Not easy, but you know what I mean? Like, that's too easy of a choice. So I think realistically, I already do lots of weird voices and like sounds and stuff like that. So I think I'd spend like a lifetime devoting my time to mimicking every single sort of weird animal or alien sound that i encounter Ooh, i like it so could you imagine like you just go somewhere in space and then you hear like, <laughs> and you're like oh my god that exists on earth and then you hear like another thing where it's like Aah! and you're like that does not exist on earth <laughs> so yeah i You'd... think i would just do weird shit yeah you, you would do <laughs> weird it things. wouldn't be things that someone would pay weird for, sounds though. but it would just be something i would do because why not i'm in space like, like I, get, I get that, you know, especially with like learning new vocal techniques. If you had like centuries and centuries to do it, I'm sure you'd be like, you know, studying from those like those throat singers. Oh, I'd be and able that. to do like the Tibetan shit where like they're able to actually the, hit two different the notes two tones. At the same yeah, time. overtones. Oh. Like, who's gonna harmonize with themselves? I or that weird tech. That weird technique in that where it, there's this continuous loop of you breathing through your nose and singing. And it's in the same. It's in the same technique. Uh, so I did a okay. I did a master yeah. class of this in university when I was when when I was at my original major, which was a music major. Let's hear it, Eric. Go on. Right no, now. I can't do it anymore. Like, it, you start with a low note and then it just like you, you do tones over it. It's really neat. Um, yeah. I'm gonna look that up. I've never heard of that. Yeah. Brittany, I just wanted to say, you said woodworking at the beginning, but I think that's really cool, actually. And I was thinking about uh, The Good Place because that's the last thing that Tahani masters mm -hmm. before she's like, well, what? Yeah, and she thinks she's go. ready to go. But yeah. so I think that, you know, that's like a, I think that's really cool. because like, I just feel like in real life, so I'd like to just try. I'm like, I like building things it's fun. with my hands. So I, like, just, I just started like two yeah. years ago and it's it's awesome. And it's yeah, awesome. I can have all the time in my house and, and built me some shit. Yeah. I want to have all the different saws, you know? Like, yeah. People are like, ooh, look at my, my like, cylindrical drill. And then, like, ooh, this You have one of those cool Japanese saws here. that cuts on the way back, I think, or, like, for it's... Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? I know about? what you're talking about, yeah. I don't know what they're called. <laughs> Um, anyway, I digress. <laughs> Rob, on, Rob on Twitch said, uh, Brittany, for every role in Last of Us 3. And Takako said, uh, Avi Kaplan, formerly of the Pentatonics, is known for doing overtones. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ooh. I love his voice. So good. Amazing. Overtones and undertones. Some of you are overtones. My dad, I think, overtones wrote a book of that thing? exact title, Overtones and Undertones. That's and amazing. A very Your dad wrote a book? Book. My dad has written, I think, three Many or book. four books. Oh, that's cool. His yeah. dad's like, a well-known dude. Yeah, yeah. Cool. 
film and music buff dude. Mm-hmm. Wow. You both. We're all learning about each other right now. Anywho, that's not important. No. We digress again. <laughs> Go Hawk. So for mine and that, um, probably. I would want to go back and, and and like relearn electronic music from the very beginning, and that you know, from analog yes. synthesizers onto the MIDI and to the digital house. age. Mm-hmm. Yeah. House. You get one of these. That's the name. <laughs> oh my You're god! Good. Can that be your Patreon like thing that you do, Hawk? Can oh you god, start god. Hawk House? Oh, oh my god! Wait, wait, not the you Hawk House, the Hawk Nest. Come Hawk on, Nest. Hawk Nest. I like Hawk House. I, I like Hawk House so cool. too. Yeah. It's got it's you're alliterative. Welcome. You're like you're like Peter Parker, but you're Hawk House. You see what I do? And you only play you, you don't play any house music though. That's what yeah. makes it no, yeah, special. That's the <laughs> most dance remixes and that with like Star Trek. Uh, we can samples. rave. I just want to hold the glow. Do the pots behind you? Come on, I'm I telling do you. Do the whistle. <laughs> oh, and sample everything in your house. That would be amazing. Yes. Coming to a patron near you. <laughs> like this is my dog bark. <laughs> Eric, you need a thing. I have a thing. <laughs> I do this. Damn it, I'm Rob. Here it. I'm here for it. Rob, cooking with Julian <laughs> might happen. Might happen. Might happen. Oh, I can't amazing. believe people uh, hopped on to watch us talk about insurrection. <laughs> wow, that was a whole nice show. Nice yeah, to come that was there. fun. Yeah, there. <laughs> oh, I thought well, you were talking about the, the on the Discord. I was like, that was fun. I mean, oh, you mean now? Yeah. yeah. That we're not doing. Oh, we'll boy. get there. We're just living in this moment right now. <laughs> Yeah, Just like an insurrection. Delaying the inevitable. Listen, we're providing a nice distraction for the people from, from the, the actual life. Yes. Mm-hmm. And didn't they need it this week? Yeah. This one's more enjoyable. We yes. promise. <laughs> and it was not on purpose. Ours. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So why don't why don't we jump into it? We're gonna jump into our insurrection deep dive and analysis. So we need somebody to read the summary. Uh, me, 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 me. I would Julian. like to do it. Thank you. I never get to read the summary because I'm always telling other people to read the summary. I'm gonna summarize. After coming to the aid of a malfunctioning data, the Enterprise and crew break direct orders from Starfleet to order aid to the Baku, whose planet is under threat from a race known as the Sona, who, through a shady deal with the Federation, keyword shady, seek to steal the properties of the metaphasic radiation, which gives the planet's inhabitants long, long life and eternal youth. The story is by Ermin! And Michael Pillar, written by Michael Pillar, directed by the man, the myth, the legend, two takes, Jonathan Frakes. Yep, second movie out. So we begin with act one as the film opens on a pre-industrial society known as the Baku who live in an ideal life of tranquility. Our focus shifts to an observatory manned by Starfleet personnel, something we've seen before, like with the people of Mintaka 3. Proto Vulcan. Operate- yeah, Proto Vulcans. Uh, standard operating procedure for studying pre-warp civilizations. The station is also manned by agents of the SONA, who appear to be working in close collaboration. Phaser fire breaks out all of a sudden as people in cloaked hazmat suits inform the observatory that the android is out of control and headed towards the village. A malfunctioning data is en route to the observatory and taking anyone down who gets in his way. After removing his concealment suit and frightening the local children, Data pulls out a phaser and uses it to take down the cloaking shield around the observatory. What do we think of this opening and what kind of tone does it set for the film? I thought it was a blast. You never take your... (laughs) Blast? Where? (laughs) Seeing my man droid walk around, kicking butt, he was like, boom, 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 you've been seen now. Yeah. The population knows, and I was like, oh no, but the Prime Directive. I've never seen this before, so I was like, what? Oh, you haven't seen this one? I didn't know that. Data not doing his data day stuff? (laughs) Damn. What a change. Well, you never take your phaser out in front of children. That's just wrong. Oh, God. He wanted to start a Baku. Ooh, nice, nice, nice. Give him something to Mintak about. Ooh, very nice. And by nice. that, I mean, oh, hey, no, the Federation. Please think of the children. Ooh, nice. Hey, hey. is for Julian's uh, got some Android. new shit. That ain't new. That's just Sorry, new to I'm... the show. It's the other one. <laughs> I, I need you to add some stuff from, uh, from I was going to say Cerritos, from Lower Decks. Yeah, that's that's gonna happen. I've been trying to look for some lower deck stuff. Yeah, you should have the <laughs> the warp core sounds. Yeah. Or uh, I need I need you to put Captain Sentry too loud. Yes. Sorry. 
I did enjoy it, though, all jokes aside. I was like, whoa, what's happening? Data, gone wrong. Again, they do this a lot, but this is fun. What? Data is the seven of nine of this of TNG. Or oh, seven of nine is the data of Voyager. Voyager yeah. He's like so many things in that. It, it, like, yeah, well, originally he was always pegged as the, you know, as the Spock of like the TNG series and that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is gonna come a lot, come up a lot, I think, during this episode, but <laughs> this this oh, opening. Person. This opening was very much like the start of a TNG episode. And that is, and if you're asking, you know, what tone does it set for the film? Oh, this is going to be one of those, like, kind of like Serenity. This is going to be just a long episode of Star Trek that happened to get released in theaters. And that's the tone it says. It's not terribly exciting. Like, you know, when you open with First Contact, you get the Borg, you get shit getting shoved into John Luke's eye, you got things popping out of his face. You're like, okay. We're in it. We're in it for this one. This one's like, okay, Data's got some malfunction again. All right. All right. Holograms, whatever. Title sequence, boom. Okay, let's see what happens. He was on board for first contact. (laughs) It's just talk, 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 talk. He he wasn't in for insurrection. That entire script needed just to be tightened up. There was a lot of dead space in it. And like you said, it felt, we even, Julian, you said it while we were uh, watching it, talking about it um on discord you you said episode a couple times we that's what it felt like it's not a bad episode but as a movie it's just you're sort of like and you it's not even that long but it feels like a two and a half hour movie i think rob said during while we were watching it that this would have been a really good uh finale episode for one of the seasons you know so I, i think that's the tone that the the opener set for sure get that uh but movie wise you know i think like subject wise it was it would be a little hard to top like the board you know it's like do they jump into something else like you know so for them to come back with just like kind of a filler movie as an episode yeah they kind of shot them you know what i didn't think about that but you're right they 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 led with this movie first contact is like boom and then how do you top that well for lack of a better term i mean they blew their load like too early you know, for the movie, for like movie wise, they went first contact and then you had insurrection nemesis. You were never ever going to top what first contact did. So, is there a- you never forget your first contact? <laughs> That's such a funny you do way. forget Julian, a the failed you insurrection. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Rob says, I like that Aaron stopped herself from saying that, but you just went for it, Julian. <laughs> I did. I, I was like, is there another phrase that's like similar to that? No, there's no. just not. Like it just no. you said it, that's yeah. what it is. It's okay. I'm in my safe space. I'm surrounded by two beautiful women. <laughs> Classic. I'm surrounded by two crazy people. No, I'm sorry, wait. Let me let me restate. I'm in my safe space. I'm surrounded by two very smart and uh badass women. Well done. Nice. Who are also beautiful. <laughs> great hair great i'm in the hair. hay right i want this hair god so if we'll move on i've so had a lot next... to drink you guys that's okay <laughs> oh, god. saturday night so mm-hmm. next the enterprise e is shown and, and the crew is preparing themselves for a diplomatic party to welcome a new species to the federation beverly fixes picard's outfit while he tries to learn the pronunciation of the region kuzar's name we learn that this race, as well as others, are being hurried into Confederation due to the losses Starfleet has suffered from the wars with the Borg and the Dominion. So it was nice seeing the movies that reflect the ongoing stories from the shows that followed TNG's finale. Any thoughts on this? It wasn't the Regent's name. It was a formal greeting that he, he was learning. Correct. Was it? Yeah. Yep. Was it the formal greeting for It him? sounded okay. like a human name, though. Yeah. yeah. You're not wrong. Either what Either way. Was well, sorry? What year did this film come out? 98. 98. 98. Honestly, I think if they, without using the DN or DNC, (laughs) DS9 cast, except for War Food somehow makes it in every film, wouldn't the Dominion have been a much better villain for this movie? Because they could have used that to tie it in. They, it's like a really epic story already there. And, um, and I think it would have brought people to the TV show and they wouldn't have had to, I don't think they have to like finish off the Dominion, but they could have, you know, the Dominion are expanding to this other place, DS, you know, outside of DS9's area. 
and I don't know like yeah. I, I just think there's a story there and they they feel threatening as hell whereas I never just like I, I never really got these guys you know like they they they're all stretchy skin and they're bad and they're it, but it just never really they, they're not the Borg they don't have that sense the, of dread about them this, you know what I love about everything you just said sorry Eric do you know what I love about everything you just said you haven't even fully watched DS9 yet and you know the importance of the Dominion right like it just would have made such a better movie and you don't see anything come of that in, from DS9 or Voyager as far as the big screen sorry Eric no 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 worries Um, and 98 was the height of the Dominion War on DS9 so you're just like you're you could have just amped it up and this was one of the three um the Dominion War movie was one of the proposed plots that got struck down. Oh, I didn't know that. Along oh, with the Q, God, that been so good. the Q one from Franks and what was the other Ooh, one. What's the Q one? I want to know about that. He wanted to do a whole movie about Q and and the Enterprise. So amazing. I can't remember what that it was. That sounds cool. Yeah, but two words, two words. Berman. Rick Berman. Berman. Do you guys think this movie, kind of between all the TNG films, is the one that sags a bit? <laughs> did it put a wrinkle in the timeline get off my bridge it kind of sacked what <laughs> Wait, in Sorry, case you don't sucked? know Brittany's trying Brittany is just trying to stretch time <laughs> oh, just stretching it. damn, oh, damn it someone else gets it on the puns <laughs> call hawk my number pun he's always my backup <laughs> your number pun rob is yeah, like hawk <laughs> he's my dominion in the pun game. <laughs> My man, a Borg. You know, there was that bridge officer in on the Enterprise who was sort you know, like the guy they added on who I was like, who is this guy? And he was all right. But you know who I thought was better? Hawk Me. from First Contact. And they mm. killed him, which I get it. Like, it was a good death, actually. That Like, I thought his character has always really stood out. Like, he felt like he was part of the crew. Yeah. But I was like, the whole time this guy's on the film, I'm like, I don't know his name. Because you know who Hawk is. They're like, Hawk! And he's like, mm, yeah. and he's all Borg. Uh, but like this guy, I'm like, he just keeps saying shit. I'm like, who is this You're bitch talking about the, security guy? Bridge? Yeah. I who like security guy. I like him too. Yeah, because Do you know his name? Everybody likes security guy. He's in first he, contact don't know his name. and he lived. So oh, I'm... he was in first contact? And yeah. he's still... Two movies and we don't know his name. His yeah. name's security guy. Like, Listen, the board Bring of Borg back Hawk. The ship, like, we have to push back. And Picard's we like, we can save seven and we can't save Hawk. Okay, he didn't have a human name, okay? His first name was Secure, middle name E.T., last name Guy. And he just got to get the, the most important man in the universe. Security Why did they bring O'Brien back? Do, do you think O'Brien, when Worf went to the movie, and even though Worf was... O'Brien never back, deserves to be He was like, film. what the fuck? What's they he going to do in the movie? Like, <laughs> I don't know, it wasn't even a joke. Come on. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> The whole movie, he's crawling through Jeffrey's tubes. He's like, guys, I'm lost. (laughs) I'd watch that. Over Insurrection. (laughs) He would be the O'Brains of the bunch. Nope. I didn't like that one. Try again. Wow. Hawk, you want to move on? I think so. So, as Picard plays the good host, Jordy... That's okay. Saturday night. As Picard plays the good host, Jordy interrupts the captain with news that Admiral Doherty, played by Anthony Zerba... (gasps) Fucking Doherty? This they were fucking pretty guy. Dirty, if you ask me. <laughs> As requested the technical schematics for Data, who informs them that Data has malfunctioned and turned on Starfleet members, taking hostages of them and the Sona representatives. Doherty turns down Picard's offer to lend assistance, but Picard, bored by the benign tasks the Enterprise and the crew have been tasked with as of late, decides to make an unscheduled visit to the Briar Patch like we knew he would. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's not, <laughs> it's not unlike John Luke to just stick his bald head where it doesn't belong. No offense, Hawk. <laughs> Dang. Prior rabbit, rabbit references stress me out. I was like, <laughs> I was like, let's not do this again. <laughs> it's a one-time thing. It's funny though. The O'Brien in, patch. The O'Brien patch. The, it's funny because in, in first contact, he's like, I'm about to commit a direct violation of our orders and we're going and then to hell with our orders and then they go. This is the second movie where they're like, nah, we're just going to go do what we want to do. <laughs> we're the Enterprise. Fuck off. And I bet you the bad guys were like, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to play pick hardball. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Julian, how much uh, work were they doing? Benign? Yes, Benign? can I help you? I hit the button. 
Oh, I was I was talking to our peeps on Twitch. I didn't hear the pun. I can't hit the button if I don't hear it. Sorry. It was a good one. Can't do it. I like the card ball. He's can't pretending, so I just stop. Um, <laughs> I, I, although, oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I will say that um, Admiral Doherty or Anthony Zerb, could they pick someone who doesn't look as evil as he does all the time? <laughs> there was no <laughs> point in this movie where I was like, this guy's not a bad guy. <laughs> it's always the case with the admirals. You're like, that's a bad admiral right there. That is a and bad They're admiral. like, what did you say? <laughs> I said what he you said. see this guy on screen, you're like, he's the bad guy. His eyebrows were always down, like he was angry. Those are fucking attack eyebrows. Come I, can't, on. I can't even do it. They're like, almost Peter Capaldi worthy. Like, come on. The, the movie, I think that's part of the problem with the movie, right? It felt really um, predictable. Like, I mean, listen, I think if we were reviewing this as an episode, Julian would be losing his shit. He'd be like, oh my God, this. This plot line is garbage. I've seen it before. Wait, there, if we were talking about the movie? No, remember, like, I'm just saying, like, it's unoriginal story writing, the whole thing. Like, that the Admiral, he's super predictable. Everything he does is predictable. This whole movie is predictable. You know exactly where fair, it is. I had a fucking blast watching it. It was during life. the, it was during the Berman era where he wanted to bring Trek back to being very, like, cookie cutter, predictable, like, not taking any risks so yeah. it's not unexpected this movie doesn't take a single risk it was a not planet one. of the week up i don't know yeah. they, they they played one big risk and that was singing gilbert and sullivan <laughs> that wasn't a risk that was a success that was a calculated a calculated Picard putting the thing on his head just like let's go <laughs> well, let's do um, that was his double dumbass moment of this movie maybe. that was just that was so... a voyage home reference <laughs> double dub ass to you um, I, yeah, I still liked it but it was just predictable like you said it's a good good episode good finale not great a movie. lot of, a lot of the points like the plots in this film were from tng episodes like relocating a society like it happened before yeah. and i love like, a good oh, data malfunction data malfunction yeah bad admiral like, Let's yeah go. <laughs> these are my favorite tropes let's go that's all it is Trope oh, it's even, trek, yeah, baby it was... it's trek we got to take the track the whole, together. The whole thing with the planet was uh, they kind of explored that in an old TOS episode. In that uh, that one episode, do you remember the one where the really? Uh, I'm trying to remember the. It's the one where they can't read any life signs, right? But they're all still alive, and Spock gets emotions from the fl- like the flowers. That one, yeah, I remember? Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, yeah it's the like a TOS remember. episode. Jesus, I have yeah. seen so little TOS. So didn't uh, they? <laughs> Didn't they Go also ahead. do a like Fountain of Youth thing in TNG as well? Yes. Yeah. Like <laughs> uh, Takako on Twitch goes Badmirals versus Dadmirals. Oh, Dadmirals would kick ass. Yeah. Be like, this tastes like shit. I'm gonna fuck you up. We need more Dadmirals. Or eat it. Well, Georgia Gior- was kind of a Dadmiral if you think about it. She was a momrel. Is that she, that she, she was Georgia. She was a badass emperor. Mem Mompera Mompera. Yeah. Anyway, Daughtry is an asshole, or Doherty, not Daughtry. Doherty. 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 You also know that he's a bad guy right from the beginning when he says his exit line the same exact way every single time. Doherty out. Like, <laughs> yeah, dude, we know you're 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 getting off comms. It's okay. Well, he couldn't say Doherty in. Oh no. yeah, that'd be weird, creepy. No, because he wasn't insurrecting. Uh, Rob would like to correct you, Blast, and say that Admiral Cornwell was the mom role. Yeah. Which one's Admiral Cornwell? He's the one who sacrificed remember. herself on the Enterprise. Oh, so you're the right, Enterprise you're right. She was legit a mom. Torpedo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel you. That was cool. I forgot that, about that character. Yeah, anyway. I like that character. I love her. Listen, I will take all the corrections. My whole thing is being wrong. The other podcast I do... Literally at the end, the episode ten, the t- it was like, "Oh, guess what? Wrong about everything." So I'm okay to be wrong. Amazing, but Hawk is always right, and he'll continue. <laughs> so meanwhile, the admiral, the admiral Doherty, on board a Sona ship, meets with Rafo, played by F. Murray Abraham. I love that guy. Oh, I Great love him too. Very good. Yeah, uh, he, had, he had choices in this movie. <laughs> <Didn't they? laughs> So we meet him during this particularly painful looking procedure meant to extend his life and his uh, um, good looks. <laughs> I, I personally love the little filmic nod to Terry Gilliam's Brazil with the face stretching yeah. procedure. Yes. 
in this brief scene, we get the intention that something nefarious is afoot and that Doherty is a very much a strong contender in the Badmiral category. Uh, as the Enterprise enters the Briar Patch, uh, the nickname given to the nebulous region that surrounds the planet, the crew begins to exhibit some odd behavior. Worf oversleeps for a duty shift, and Riker and Troy act like flirtatious teens. We also learn that the Sonas uh, seem like strange bedfellows for the Federation. Uh, with slavery, weapons outlawed by the Kittimer Records, and the production of Ketracel White being part of their resume. Can we talk <laughs> about that, that real quick? Sure. How can they be the producers of Ketracel White if the Dominion and the Jem'Hadar are from the Gamma Quadrant? Like, there's a hardcore continuity issue here, right? Mm -hmm. Unless the Dominion during the war found the Sona and they're like, oh, you can't get this from the Gamma Quadrant? I guess we can replicate it and make it for you too. It's kind of a big fuck up if that's not explained somewhere, which I you don't. You want to know the biggest continuity error? When Troy is like, I've never kissed you in a beard before. And I was like, now I haven't seen all Star Trek, but you have. I actually don't think that. I don't think has. So. Really? I, I think I she guess has. we're just going to have to rewatch that. TNG. I'm She's pretty sure. Thomas Riker, I think. I think they kissed in that episode. Yes, they did. Okay. They, like, dated for, like, ten minutes. Damn, it cropped weird. I wanted to put a picture of the two of them. The oh, remember my crop weird? It's okay. Anyway. I, I liked, even though it was goofy, I liked their scenes together. And, oh, when he shaves that beard off. And Data's like, huh. mm -mm. Data could not handle it. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> I did love their antics throughout this movie, and then I need a little counseling. <laughs> yeah. There's something you, I'm having a midlife crisis. The thing that shined through the movie because it's like it's not my favorite, and it doesn't sound like it's anyone else's either. Like it's not bad, but it's not great. But the thing that shines through that makes it still, I think, really watchable is the interactions between the characters that we love. Like I love character moments. I love the in between moments. I love, and that Riker is great with those things too. His you feel like they're a family and the way that, you know, Riker pokes at Worf and the way Data like double takes Riker's non-bearded face. I think those are the moments that really like help this movie stay together. It just, you feel the family vibe. Yeah, I think at this point they were like 11 years together as, as a cast, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it was so relaxed, so comfortable and that, you know, even, even Troy had dropped like kind of like, you know, the, the, the yeah, pretense that, that she kind of always held in the show, you know? She's like, are they vegetarian? That wasn't in the file. <laughs> it looked like they had fun. Mm -hmm. And the I, fact that, like, he shaved and he was, like, softer than an android's bottom. And the fact that, like, later on, then Data's like, hmm, no. <laughs> like, He's touched his own butt, kids. <laughs> He's exploring his humanity. I know, I love it. It's great. We never know. I Nope, nope, no, I'm not going to say that. Keep it going. Oh, I got it. <laughs> It's okay to explore, kids. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> Anywho, upon <laughs> hearing. <laughs> Give it a moment. Upon hearing that Doherty and, and Raffo intend to terminate data, Picard and Worf use a shuttlecraft to play a high-speed game of chicken with a malfunctioning android, which leads to a wonderful action sequence and one of the funniest moments in, in, in Star Trek filmography. What does everybody think about this? And what do we think of the lighthearted comedic moments in this film in general? Best part of this movie. Offer? Best it part was, of the movie. It's, yeah. it's hilarious. The fact that like it's smart that they sing to him and then like attach the ships together and stuff. Like I was just like, that's that's good on Picard. Like he really thought, like, what was the last thing he was doing? Ah, he'll know this. Just to distract him enough and then as soon as they like couple together, then Data's like, Hey, hey, no. Like, oh, it's so good. Oh, it's like no. we know the cat. So here, here in Philly, we have a um, a really well renowned, a very I think known worldwide, uh, Gilbert and Sullivan troupe called the Savoy Company, and my cousin Gabby was a part of them for a very long time. And then um, we made friends who introduced. I, I had already known about it, but Karen joined and was in multiple productions. Got to uh, be on stage with the Academy of Music multiple times. I did some stage crew for them for a while. Um, so Gilbert Sullivan is a very big part of my life and I love it. And, uh, how, no matter how bad this movie is, the scene is just everything. And like, I think we were even joking about it in the chat. Like we could have just turned the movie off there and we're like, good, let's, let's go to the pod now. We'll just talk about Gilbert and Sullivan. It's fine. 
Um, this scene's so great. And Picard singing and Worf like, mm -mm, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me I sing, love, Captain. <laughs> I love when he's talking to him and he's like, well, I just got back on the ship. I haven't met the new like ensigns or new crew members. And he's like, the way he looks at him and then he's just like, they're 19th century composers. Like, I laughed out loud. I was just like, what the fuck? That was the most Picard Worf moment ever. And at second of all, I was like, dude, he's a fucking Klingon. Like, he doesn't expect you to know all the Klingon opera. He's half you human. Know, you know that Worf loves Klingon know, opera. I, you know he loves that I shit. I know, but it was just so funny because, like, the look on his, it was like a meme before memes were a thing. Like, the way Picard turns to him and says that and then Worf's face, he's like, I was cracking up cracking up i loved it i do love the end bit in that when it, when war finally gets into the shuttle and that and with the little tri-corner it's supposed to deactivate him within four meters and, like, deep, deep. and he's still <laughs> yeah, coming and then, <laughs> and then he falls oh i love that <laughs> oh so good uh so moving on after successfully subduing data picard leads the away team to the planet to save the hostages and meets the baku the race that lives in this paradise and their leader Ani Anish, I'm trying to remember. Yeah. Anish, uh, played by Donna Murphy, who not only know their way around a positronic neural net, but apparently also warp capable, but simply choose not to be. Oh yeah, she Suspicious. knows her way around a positronic neural net. Right. <laughs> she knows her way around the warp core. I need a button for Julian. <laughs> Continue, Hawk. <laughs> Suspicious of the circumstances, Picard and Data investigate the scene of Data's malfunction, eventually finding the secret that leads to the attack on Data, a cloaked Federation ship transport with a holographic recreation of the Baku village, meant to transport the indigenous population without their knowledge. This raises a dark subject matter in human history and the resettlement of people by more powerful forces who want lands for themselves. So what are our thoughts on the main conflict in this movie? I think the main story, if they if they were able to keep it tighter, that's a really good story. And that's, I think, the best of many Jean-Luc speeches in this film. That's the one where he says, how many people until it matters? Is it, you know, is it 10,000? 10,000, 10,000. A million. And I think that that, if they were able to, when they were making the story, put that in the middle and frame it around that, I think there's a really... I think there's like a first contact worthy story in there, but I just think that they lost that because you're watching it and you forget that that's what it's about. I feel like you forget that a lot of time, even when these people are like running around, you forget that. Um, but I think that part of the story, I think that's a good story. Yeah. I think we, I think we talked about this during um, in the, in the discord, like this movie just stopped so many times for, for needless dialogue and, and, maybe one too many, you know, preachy John Luke moments, which I don't necessarily agree with. I, anytime that he gets to talk and be preachy, he's one of the only captains that'll be like, okay, preach, dude, just keep talking. Um, but I mean, listen, uh, the, the line about the boobs and then like data replicating, like that could have been cut. Um, I don't know the whole, I know everybody was going through some kind of like getting younger shit, but like Worf's zit didn't need to be in there. Um, there's just so so much garbage packed into what could have been a, a good movie and uh dude and just i don't know like the, the the sona are just not like uh they're not convincing bad guys like how are they able to like function if they have to keep getting their faces stretched like i just uh I, what I don't. else are they stretching yeah <laughs> <laughs> talk yeah, about data being fully functional i will the say way, i wasn't the way, prepared for the pimple <laughs> the way i see the sona and that i mean like you know as we learn like you know where they came from and that they already kind of came you know came away from like the the home world with a lot of knowledge and that which they used to kind of to basically like as as it's noted they conquered other races and that made them labor classes and that they started developing other technologies and that like they were already kind of a, a, a technologically advanced people in that who just kind of kept growing and growing in that, you know, and so like the genetic manipulation in that, the weapons they were developing, you know, um, I don't see that being like a, a major kind of plot point, but, you know, here we see that they've kind of reached the limits of what they can actually do with genetic manipulation. And they, that's, this is what informs the return to the planet. Yeah. There I, just... I put my favorite colonizer meme in the background. It's a good one. Yeah, what is what's the top part say? Sounds, like a, sounds like a colonizer. I, I always think this of 
all the time when Black Panther came out. That's what I was white, thinking white of. people were spewing their bullshit, so I would just, like, respond with this. I was like, sounds like a colonizer. Sure, uh, he's a queen. It you know, took me a minute to find it, but I did. The one, the one thing that I also have an issue here, going back to, like, DS9 and this being the height of the Dominion War, like, it's believable that this could happen under Starfleet's noses because they're so preoccupied, right? But, like... The fact that of all ships, and listen, the Enterprise was not just like the Enterprise under Pike wasn't heavy during the Klingon War. The Enterprise E was not very much involved in the Dominion War. Um, as the flagship, they had the diplomatic responsibilities. But like, so I don't know. It's just like the the circus is like, of course the Enterprise is there to save the day. But really, like, if we're talking real life, the Federation might have got gotten away with this because you got to know that Doherty also isn't alone in this. I'm sure he had collaborators. So again, it's just like that would have been some some interesting writing, like a, a la Star Trek Six. Like, who else in Starfleet is involved? You know, instead we get all this needless dialogue and you know on the planet, and it, there just could have been such a more interesting story like woven in there. Yeah. You know, I get like kind of the main crux of it was like, you know, Starfleet tacitly kind of accepted this, you know, because it's like, okay, you're just going to move very small people in that off a planet and that, you know, instead of them just going ahead and just like reaping away at the, at the, the metaphasic radiation and that around the rings and that and just destroying the planet altogether and that. And so that's why there was a whole pretense in, in the film about them having to be transported safely off the planet instead of just outright killed. Yeah. I, I thought it was a little, there were parts of it that I was, I thought were odd. Like when we see the guy getting his skin stretched and he's doing that well, talking to the Admiral, uh, Badmiral guy. It's like, I, I get that they're trying to show that moment, but even that to me felt odd. Like I'm having this meeting, but I'm going to have my skin stretched at the same time. Like I really got, I've got a time constraint here. It, like it just didn't feel, the timing was really weird. The, like I think the pacing of this movie is really what makes it struggle. There's just lots Lots of time stuff. My favorite part is when Data walks into the water. Because <laughs> he's such a fucking... I love androids, so let me just say, the Data-centricness, as much as I love that in TNG in general, I love that in this movie. And when he just, like, is scanning at first and, just, like, walks into the water and doesn't even, like, you know, dive or swim the way, like, a person normally would, just walks <laughs> and his head just disappears. I was like cracking up. I was like, "This is amazing. I love data." And the kids just like, "Does he breathe, or does he need to breathe?" Car's like, "Nah, he doesn't breathe." He's like, <laughs> does he That's rust? A mood. Can't wait for that to be me. <laughs> Mag Mag says no, but they but they have lovely surgical assistants. Oh, they were creepy. And I they get it. I get why they wanted to show like a certain group of people why they would need to move them from their planet. So it had to be people that need the regenerative qualities. And I mean, let's be honest, colonizers be saggy and white some most of the time. Uh, I think it was highly accurate. So, mm. I mean, <laughs> yep. I don't know. I, I really I had fun with this movie. I'm not saying it's my favorite. Like, I still enjoyed the other ones we saw. Like, I really liked First Contact. Uh, and uh, shit, what was the other one? Generations. No, Generations, wasn't that the one where they had both the OG crew? Yes. And crew? Yeah. No, I didn't like that as much. There was the one. Undiscovered I Country. Early. Undiscovered Country. I like, yeah, the one I watched right before that. I like those two the most. Yeah. Which one's so. the one whales? I only, I only Voyage Home. That's uh, four, the Voyage Home. We got to do that. I only saw that like this while I was in quarantine. I was like, ah, I should probably watch this. And I was like, whoa. Anyway, I, this Great. one was just fun to watch while I was doing my laundry. Yeah. I was like, I, what is going on? I have to admit, I enjoy this way more this time watching it than the first time I watched it. Like, Ooh, I had the opposite effect. Hmm, yeah, I don't know. I think it was because I was listening it to you guys talk while I was watching it, and just it was it was like that mystery science three thousand thing. We were making fun of the movie That's while why watching. You don't it. That you don't fun. watch a bad movie on your own. <laughs> you watch it with friends. Oh, I did that earlier today for our other show, and that was not fun. That's you why watched, Discord. You watched, really. He watched a movie that has very high ratings that he didn't like. What's it called? I just want to let the audience know. He doesn't like anime, so so it, wait, wait, it was immediately one? gonna be bad. Tokyo Godfathers. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know that. It's a wild plot. It's a wild plot. I'll say but that. Jesus Christ, Vampire Hunter. Yeah. Anyway, moving I have on. To find that movie. I liked Velocipaster. I was gonna say, don't what? Don't watch Velocipaster alone. Did you watch that no, shark watch movie with Santa? The Santa's shark movie. Yeah, that was bad. Bad. It, I tried. Uh, you know me. 
but no, we oh, that was bad, bad, That's not fair. good, bad. Anyway, but but the with the little Santa hat on his fin, and then he had like the lights in his teeth. That was funny. Yeah. Back to what we were talking about. <laughs> Shut Great up, segue. Wrigley. <laughs> I wanted to segue. Sometimes, like I try. I to thought it was a good segue. One. It was good. It was still a pun. We get out of hand. Moving into Act Two, and in that upon examination of the crew from the back, return from the Baku homeworld, the personnel are found to not be not just be in more than perfect health, and that they seem to be regenerating. Picard confirms his suspicions with Anish that the planet has healing properties that can extend life and vitality for centuries, and this leads us to one of the probably one of the best scenes in the movie, and that between Picard and Geordi, whose optic nerves have regenerated and witnesses a sunrise with human eyes for the very first time. Yes. That was my Let's favorite part. I cried. First of all, nobody told me Jordy was going to see in this movie. I was not prepared. That First, I saw him without his visor, and he had his, his, his magical blue eyes on. And so I was like, ooh, blue eye Jordy. This is fun. And then he saw the sunrise, and I was just weeping. I had to pause it. I was weeping Aww. onto my laundry in the living room. And I was just like, that was like two seconds. But oh, my God, I love LeVar Burton. So. I know he didn't. He didn't have that much to do in the movie and that, but at least he like the, with this scene, he he played the hell out of it. I feel like there's a better role for him than uh, the previous movie we watched, where they kind of like it was like I don't know, goofy Jordy antics and like yeah. he got captured, and I was like, ah, Jordy wouldn't get captured. Oh man! Wait, when did Jordy get captured? Two generations. Uh, generations. Oh yeah, that was yeah. Remember oh, and Data is with him. Is yeah. Little... Um, I I was I was saying that like I I really wish that this was like. I don't know, a, a year's seasons long payoff for Jordy that he'd kind of be the one who got to like keep what happened to him. I think that would have been a really beautiful payoff that he just, he got his sight back and he didn't have to go back to the ocular implants because listen, you had Jordy with the visor for seven seasons. He gets the ocular implants in first contact. And then in this movie, he just gets his sight back and it would have been so awesome if that carried over. It was just like somehow, some way it's Star Trek. They could have, explained it away somehow that he got to keep his real eyes and or the and, regeneration uh, like it did regenerate you but then when you left you were just stuck at like you couldn't regenerate more yeah exactly so i just i, I wish that he had that moment and having said that it was still oh it was still such a beautiful beautiful moment and to see his real eyes yeah oh, oh, did, oh. Nice oh it was so great did he use his robo eyes in nemesis like is yes. there okay was there a point in bringing that back yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, well, no, you... I mean, no, he didn't use them. Like, there wasn't anything he did with them. Oh no, that's he... what I meant. I like, was it important in the film? No, or... not at all. Oh, no. Okay. Then Do they should have kept though, it. That well, I mean, I, I get why they didn't because everybody else sort of started to go back to where they were. But do you think it, it's? I always think of when. Uh, you know reading comic books now everybody comes back so no death is permanent so it just doesn't mean anything anymore or when a character comes back from life like if they bring back tony stark in a marvel movie in any time with with robert downey jr it will ruin the moment and i'm not I'm pretty this sure he's in black with no, it's yeah, but it's a flashback like, <laughs> yeah it's a flashback it's flashback and i'm not and, and jordy's not dead but I'm just saying, like, he had this beautiful moment and he sees the sunrise. Is it less impactful that he's going to now he can just see like, does it I, I'm not saying it takes away, but I think that there's something special about that in it's a way. Fleeting, yeah, that, it, 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 it was one of those. It was just one of those moments that kind of captured like kind of the, you know, the message in the film and that, you know, with the, with the Baku and that, you know, it's like some people just need to live like in that one moment of time and that, you know, like even Jordy said himself and that it might not last that. But whatever, you know, yeah. he still he still got to see like, you know, with his, You're gonna make with me cry his again, own huh? eyes. I know. I'm sorry. It's like when people wear those chroma glasses and they just oh. I, I saw one the they other day. The first time. This guy, he was looking around and there was a red car and then there was like a green bush. And it was just like just to watch someone turn around and look at a bush like you're like, uh, there's something about that that really resonates. It's the same yeah. as when you wear glasses for the first time, like you don't realize that you can't see until you're given basically sight again like I had a horrible vision as a kid and then when I got glasses for the first time in like first grade I remember I could see like grass I could see leaves on trees like I stared at my carpet for like half an hour when I got home <laughs> like the world just became so much more vast and amazing to me like I wear contacts non-stop so you can't really tell that I, I need it but without them I can't see past like my hand so maybe yeah. that's why Jordy made me cry I don't know 
There was this amazing video what? a couple of years ago, and that it was a baby who had was born deaf, and that oh, and, uh, yeah. just got it. Remember that? Oh, the first that implant, one's gonna that? With the ocular implant. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> it was so beautiful <laughs> when he heard his mother's voice for the first time. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. <sighs> <sighs> What anyway, were we talking about? This is the best part of the movie. <laughs> Star Trek? Star Trek. Oh, Star Trek. <laughs> so moving on, upon confronting Doherty and R- R- Raffle about his discovery that the Federation was al- oh, is allowing the forced relocation of the indigenous Baku so the Sona may harvest the metaphasic oh, wow. radiation oh. that gives the planet its healing properties for themselves. Doherty makes his arguments about the legalities of this operation only tacitly approved of by Starfleet. Picard, of course, is not swayed, and he makes a personal stand when he realizes the Federation is is so desperate for new allies that they're willing to allow this to go on. Of course, the crew decides to join him in his efforts. Gorches be damned. Gorches be damned. Can we talk about how many apostrophes are in everything in this movie? Rubio, <laughs> like Rubio. everything. Oh, yeah. My God. <laughs> I noticed the same thing when I was going. I was like, how do you, how do you spell the Sona? How do you spell the Baku? And that's going to break the door down and be like, stop fucking calling in the middle of the night. <laughs> oh, mercy. Oh, sorry. God, I love hooks. <laughs> Me too. Uh, this moves us into Act 3. In order to save the Baku, the Picard and crew must move them out of transport range of the Sona's ships in a mass exodus to the mountains that contain Kelvinite, which can shield them from the transporters. Meanwhile, Riker and Jordy take the Enterprise back through the Briar Patch in order to make contact with Starfleet and put a human face on the Baku's plight to the Federation Council. Now, I gotta apologize to the listeners in that. I was I ran out of time when I was doing up the summary in that, so I think uh, as of this moment, and that we are just basically free balling it here. Free falling, um, like yeah. in Fall Guys. Um, <laughs> um uh, you guys said free we, falling. We said guys, free balling. For us, it's Bakuna Matata. Bakuna Matata. Um, had this movie stayed aboard the Enterprise, it would have been a much more interesting movie. Um, and they actually. Who else wanted a scene with Riker actually making it back to like communications rays, having like a you know what would have been a great, great um connection to uh DS9 if he talked to the admiral that Cisco was working with during the war, the good admiral, not, totally. not the bad admiral. Um, and he was like, Listen, this situation is happening, you need to bring this to Starfleet and the Federation. Like, where's that scene? That would have been good. Um, but we got to see the Riker maneuver, we got to see him be badass and drive the ship with the joystick and i'm like yeah. all right i'm here anytime will Riker gets to do anything with the enterprise I, uh, it gets me all gets me all hot <laughs> yeah hot. yeah I love Riker. yeah he mastered his joystick like a fisherman masters bait <laughs> there's another uh it's silly but it's funny i'm done i'm not gonna begin it <laughs> oh, God. i oh, broke that i broke the podcast <laughs> Okay, I was just like, there's no point in me punning on top of that. Like, there's, there was layers to it, <laughs> and I would just be fishing for more puns, you know. Hawk. <laughs> um, yeah, right. Anyway, where uh, are we going? Um, I, th- I, th- I thought the. We're only I thought... going where no one has gone before. <laughs> first of all, Aaron. <laughs> I will be serious in this moment. I did like all the stuff on the Enterprise. Um, the, I like. I thought the idea of uh, transporting. All the like Rafo or whatever his name is onto Rufio. the yeah Rufio into the into the holodeck Rafo. was was actually pretty good. I thought that was a great idea. Um, mm. But the fact that he had to shoot the holodeck like ten times to figure out that he was in a holodeck, I thought that was a little. I was laughing at that. There's like, <laughs> ceiling over here. Oh, there's the door. All right. Talk oh. about a holodeck move. <laughs> I'll wow. give you that one. That was good. <laughs> Thanks. That's what they say in the holodeck, by the way. And he just didn't even like even when he was doing that, it just didn't it even that took too long. Like it that felt he was just like, uh, uh, huh. uh it, it, there was no like like Urgency? intention or no. like yeah, because it, it should have been like ah, rah, 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 like like he, he just like Yeah. Even when they like moved over to that ship and they were climbing, there was no real urgency. I didn't feel like anything bad was gonna happen. Well, that's the big problem, right? Like, that's fine. like that's the massive issue with the pacing of this movie. You have no urgency on the planet, right? But then you get to the Enterprise, and like you got vapor coming out of the nacelles. You got like you know a subspace breach about to tear the Enterprise apart. Like there is a sense of urgency there, and you're like, oh, 
We're walking through the mountains. We're talking about our boobs. <laughs> oh, wait, there's a cave in. Maybe the kid should just fucking die. Um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that, like, and the, the whole thing with the kid was dumb. And yeah, yeah. And let me tell you, it the, the boobs thing is like, let's go all the way back to like season two where the women are just doing calisthenics together. Oh. Like a little bit of this. It's like, do your boobs feel t- like nice? Like, I was just like, Star Trek, two steps to forward, fair, one step back. Barman! To be fair. I think that the insurrection earlier in the week really just threw us off because we're so used to this very stressful and very like immediate insurrection that happens. And then we watch this and we're like, this is hardly an insurrection. That's <laughs> a very good point. This yeah. is relaxing. This might as well be Risa. <laughs> <laughs> the... Like, calm the fuck down. Nothing was on fire. Nobody, they were climbing, yes, but not the Capitol. <laughs> not in avoiding the of... steps completely. <laughs> In defense of the climbing scene from this movie, at least we got to see ripped Patrick Stewart in it. And right. and chesty ripped. Patrick Stewart. Man, it's so Oh yeah, he flopped open that movie. shirt. Yeah. He, he loves a little, a little, little V. Yeah, he does. His little whatever the fuck that was. His little cha cha slot. Do you call it what? <laughs> I don't know. He just did some like I don't remember, what but I remember he mean? got back to the room and he like hit some well, tango is like a dance where you do that, so I don't know why I did it, but like, oh, you know what I mean? okay, I see. And he was also tangoing. Yeah, also, there we go. He did some dance. I don't fucking remember. I just remember he got back to the room and he's like, "I'm feeling so young and lively," and I was like, "Patrick Stewart, calm down." <laughs> you know like, when you're young I... and lively and you do the tango or a salsa? That's what I do. I... When I was twenty, I I'm young and lively and I eat off. lots of I... salsa. That's all I know. <laughs> Guacamole. <laughs> Um, uh, early in the film they spent this whole like five to seven minute scene where they were talking about this perfect moment in time and this big it was it seemed like a big deal and all like it the payoff the payoff i'm gonna air quotes that was when she was slightly uh like immovable like she sort of looked like she had some dust on her and was in that rock pile and then the the dust slows down like there was no point in having that in the film like (laughs) Like, and it was never really explained. Like, yeah, uh, that. yeah. Like, I, I get that they live on a planet, you know, that throws off these healing rays and that that slows time, reverses time, you know, reverses their aging and everything and that. But how does it actually slow time down? The apparently? whole thing with the flower and the waterfall and the hummingbird, like, get the fuck Hold out. On. <laughs> it's, a, it's get this, get this. It's a power they share. Yeah. They can turn back time. Can, can someone read NY's? They can uh, find comment? a way. Yes, <laughs> I will cool. read it. The, the planet caused Riker to notice Troy, but not Picard to notice Crusher. I'd wondered when movie first aired if they'd follow up on the relationship storyline that was brought up in season seven. I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, and Picard well, going after this random woman, and then and there's no payoff in the end. Like I think Eric said it while we were doing the chat. There's no like they we never see this woman again. Blah blah blah. But the Beverly thing in him, I, I've always felt was like very, like there was a lot of mutual respect there. And it was, it felt a lot more natural of a relationship. It's one of the few times Star Trek hasn't sort of been gross about it. Yeah. And, and yet, like you say, this would be, if they were going to do that, what an opportunity to really make that happen. And yet he's just going out. Who is this? Oh, I don't even know her name, Boobs. honestly. And Angie or something. Anji, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Say, Maggie, it, just, Ani, 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 Anish. Ani. Anyway, uh, Riker just wanted to give it the old Troy. And uh, Picard's just going to keep pressuring on Beverly. That's just how it's going to be. It's in I, like Aaron, I like Aaron's idea in that. Why, you know, it should have happened. Yeah. With, with Beverly in that, this would have been a, a, a great for Picard and Beverly in that, like a little romance story, even that might actually play down on this planet and that, yeah. where, you know, they're kind of, yeah, feeling more like they were in their teens and that. And, I wonder if they didn't do it because oh they didn't show it in the movie so the, just the moviegoers won't understand it and, but like that that bothers me because they also did that with Worf in this film right his wife had just died on DS9 and oh yeah that's, that's okay go ahead okay <laughs> um, <laughs> it's just like and like hard. everything that he has gone through like no one was like oh I feel sorry for you or like you know. Give, I'll give you a bro hug or anything at the yeah, beginning. Where's like, Deanna coming to like give him a hug? Like they were, they they were doing shit? it in season seven. Like you don't give him like a sympathy hug? Like come on, man. Okay, I know we haven't gotten there in the watch long, but I do know that Worf and Dax get married. I know, I, but I haven't seen those episodes. Um, does does the Enterprise crew show up for the wedding? Because I feel like they should. 
that's bananas crazy so he shows up to every one of these goddamn movies to help with all these important things and then a they don't show up to i don't know if there was a funeral um they don't show up to that they don't show up to the wedding like they're being shitty friends they he, Worf always goes to their house they never go to Worf's house i hate those kind of friends no i agree i agree yeah no, the show had major cross-platforming issues. They yeah, didn't they did. go to. No one went to the wedding. Not they didn't get one person was, to go to the well, wedding. O'Brien. <laughs> Obviously, that doesn't count. Was there. It does. Could, he was part of the Enterprise crew. Yeah. I feel no, like it's, it's bad continuity. At least yeah. Deanna, like Deanna, would have gone. I feel like they'll have better chance doing that with shows now that like Star Trek is all you know. They could yeah. do a crossover with Discovery, Lower Decks, whatever the fuck they want now. But like Dude, back they'll then, pay for them to go to like, Iceland now. TNGs, uh, it's coming to an end. DS9, uh, it's the dark one. We don't want to be able. Oh, Voyager, that's the female one. Like that's the thing. Like, they reference each other, but they were. Burman. But people mean... liked Worf so much, they 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 were like, let's take the Worf part of TNG and sprinkle him in DS9, so the show does better. Yeah, that was it. Um... As far as the ending, you know, the ending of this movie goes, I mean, talk about also being like just completely anticlimactic. Like, okay, it's sales, over. Sales, holodeck. Oh, here comes the Enterprise. Boom, boom, boom. Pew, pew, pew. We got two no's from uh, Ra- uh what? from Rafo. Rafo, that was fun. And then, and then we get the Winter Soldier scene where they're in like the control room and switching out the the panels. Um, I can hear the music now. Yeah, it's just, uh, and then like the, you know what the most cringy line in this movie is, okay. the very the very end when they're like, oh, will I see you again? And Picard's like, well, I have three hundred and fifteen days of shore leave uh, built up, and I intend to use them. Like, you're gonna come all the way over here, you're gonna come here and spend time with her. Like, you're not gonna go back to if France. They can freeze time. You know how? Much oh, I guess his family's dead at this point, so no reason to go back to France. But I don't know. Like, uh, uh, yeah, uh. it was. It felt so tight. For- everything in a fire. was forced. Yeah, yeah. That's how we feel. I we think don't it, like it. Definitely, definitely third act problems. Yeah. yeah. It was a lot of they didn't want to. I guess ever they didn't want to commit to Picard and Beverly ever happening. You know what this is? They uh-huh. wanted to make a movie. This was them being like, okay. This show's over. We've got DS9, Voyager, they're on. Uh, we should make a movie that everybody will go and see, even people who don't watch Star Trek, because that's what it is. It's a box, it's a box episode in a movie where and I the thing that's funny about that is I don't agree with that. I think first contact is a movie you can I'm about to find out. Allie and I are about to do this. She's never seen it. But like I feel like they they didn't take any risks. They didn't try to do anything with this movie, and it's just it falls kind of flat. Um, on on Twitch, Rob goes um because we're talking about you know how Berman was very influential and influential in this film. Meanwhile, Ron Moore, who we all know is a legend, was working on DS Nine, and the question came off. You know what did Ron Moore think of Rick Berman? Rob said that he doesn't think that Ron Moore liked Berman very much because I guess Ron Moore I didn't know this when and worked on Voyager for like an episode two and just said like fuck off see you later um and then engineer with like the greatest comment of all time yeah i'm gonna go make the best sci-fi series of all time instead (laughs) so So. that's crazy because he could have made that means voyager which i love voyager but he could have made the voyager the like family friendly i guess version of voyager but in a in the ron moore style and i think that would have been like that would have taken it to a different level and it, it to me it just seems like berman got in the way of a lot of good things like we i love that generation air generation of trek um all of those shows but just there's a lot of two steps forward one step back and i just feel like he got in a lot of people's way well you know berman I mean? yeah berman's issue was that he got he got so pushed out even though he was in charge by ira burr because ira was like we're going to tell these stories on ds9 we're going to do the show the way we want and if you don't like it you can fire us and it just came down to berman not having the wherewithal to fire them like he just i don't think he had the control from whatever i think it would have caused a lot of panic and, and paramount and um you yeah, know really so the, the whole the whole thing was the minute that they announced voyager berman just completely took control and didn't let anyone else there and made it back to that kind of TNG style uh, is- show. And, and we get that, we get that with this movie, you know? Yeah. And it's a shame because I think that I think, well, okay. I know we're getting away from the actual thing we're talking about, but just, 
I feel like the cast of Voyager is so solid and good that I think that a, a you know, a Ron Moore storyline would have been something that we would still be talking about. Can I read the fun fact? Yeah. I've been waiting yeah. to read the fun fact. I'm so excited. So, for people that didn't know, in this movie, Armin Shimmerman filmed a scene in his role as Quark, in which he tries to set up timeshares on the Baku planet at the end of the film. I, Why didn't they do that? I'm pretty sure been... Rom was with him, too. <laughs> that would have been so bad. Yeah. Rom and Quark. That would have been so bad. That would have been so great. Rom and Quark. I would have hated it. that. I would have loved that. Yeah. No, that would have been the DS9 connection we needed. And then they could have done imagine? all the Dominion shit. God damn it. Condominiums. <laughs> I don't know why. Um. Oh, God. <laughs> I tried. I tried to pull it all together, listeners. Um, they should have called this movie Star Trek Regenerations. Or maybe the next Regeneration. Ooh, Regenerations. Actually, that's, I don't that's what they could have named First Contact. Oh, well. Borg Regeneration? No, no. No. Maybe. Eh, it kind of works. Star Trek. We already did Last this Contact. in the series. <laughs> Star Trek. Trek among the stars. Star Trek, where we have gone before. Star Trek, let's rate this movie. <laughs> Wait, Star Trek. How many stars? Twitch, tell read. us what you would name it. Star Trek Recycle and Reuse. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Rating? Out of, Rating? Out of what? Yeah. Oh, out, um, of, what if... out of 10. Gorgeous. Solar sails. <laughs> just kidding. Ten solar boobs. sails. How did, I, don't, I was trying to think of something and then just kept remembering how many did you guys talk about. Of how many inches you could stretch your face? How many sunrises? Ew. How many <laughs> war, war wrinkly pimples. white colonizers? Gorges. How many Riker beards that you would shave off? I like yeah, gorges. I like gorges. gorges. <laughs> or android bottoms. Android bottoms. Android bottoms. I'm gonna give this a. Ugh. <laughs> I think it... He doesn't want to say it. He doesn't say I, booty. I, I hear I'm, him gonna, say it. I'm gonna give. Say Android booty. Do it. Call I'm gonna it. give uh, Star Trek Insurrection a 4.5 out of 10 Android baby bottoms. Baby bottoms. Oh. Android baby bottoms. <laughs> so yeah, oh, there's four. Point five. So that's four, like four butt cheeks two, in total. Three, eight, four. eight. That's eight and a half cheeks. <laughs> and Twitch, please let us know, and YouTube, let us know your your ratings as well. I don't know how I feel about the butt cheeks. I don't know how I feel about the butt cheeks either. I'm, I'm gonna go with four point five gorges because gorges are gross as is this movie. I, I'm gonna give this film a six out of yeah six, Ooh, wow. mostly because I enjoyed watching it with you guys and listening to the commentary. Um. I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10 Android booties. Buddha, buddha, buddha. I'm, I'm going to give buddha. it a 5.5 Android bottoms um, because I I didn't hate it. I just Get like, back. it's, yeah, yeah and, I, and I want to stay on the positive side because, you know, 5.5 5. Yeah. 5 bottoms is Agreed. more than half. Um, it, it, it It's, you know, uh, it's a story we've heard before, but like, the character moments do it for me. Jordy's moments, you know, there's there's good there's a good story in there. We just didn't get the full thing. So uh five point five Android bottoms. So. Yeah, like good moments, but not good connecting, right? Yes. And Doc Ock's wife was just random in this, right? Oh, just... uh, well, that's right. She was Yeah, that's Doc Ock's. Yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> My Anaconda don't want none unless you got ROM son. <laughs> uh, so oh since I didn't see a single <laughs> Thank you. I've been holding that in while you guys did your goddamn ratings. <laughs> I was so polite. I had to kill Brittany for the Empire. It ate me up inside. I was like, oh, ever since you mentioned Rom. Um, We're going full terror for you. I, uh, I just had to do it for the Ferengi, you know? Fair enough, fair enough. Did it all this, movie the had, this movie had some lobes, you know? Um... I won't say it was lucrative. Profit. Uh, they definitely did it for the profit. <laughs> See if I can keep this all for you. <laughs> um, what rule of acquisition would you relate this movie to? Ooh. So hard. They're all so greedy. <laughs> Just like this movie. <laughs> I'd have to Google them. I don't know which one I'd really pick. One about uh, poor people overthrowing you. I think that's one. There you go. So, um, 
Insurrections. There you go. Insurrections are almost as good as umlocks. So, uh... I had fun. I had a blast watching this movie because I've never seen it before. I will agree. (laughs) A blast, yes. Um, I will agree that it's uh, definitely more of like a super long episode. Felt just like a TNG episode. I was like, Data's up to some crazy shit. Is he bad? Is he good? Okay, he's good. Like, Federation shenanigans, saving a new culture. It was all pretty standard. So, I mean, I'll give it an 8 out of 10. I had no... Five cheeks? 8 out of 10. Yes. 8 out of 10. (laughs) bodacious booty, booty, booty. butt cheeks <laughs> booty 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 rocking everywhere um baby got back <laughs> what happened to oh us oh my god Hawk, <laughs> <make your movie. laughs> this is guys, what happens when like, i host this keep talking about butts android asses like that's what i'm talking about <laughs> i can't wait to hear about all the asses hawk feels this movie is worth <laughs> um so yeah like it was it's probably mediocre but it was my first time so i had a blast Blast. Blast. So for me, um, I saw this in the theater back in '98, and I was remember thinking, this really broke that whole jinx in that the, uh, on the odd on the odd numbered movies in Star Trek. You know, I enjoyed it the first time around. I didn't enjoy it as much the second time around, mostly just because of the third act issues and that. But I will say it was the most interactive and relaxed the crew has ever been around each other, and that and the playfulness of their of their interactions really elevates the film above some of the weak sauce writing i'm gonna go seven and a half seven Ooh. of nine Maybe. seven and a half android bottoms nice <laughs> um, would you say they're all best buddies in this film best bo- nope um twitch was not kind Ooh, i'm I can't wait go on uh, ny rally gives it five out of ten bubble bass uh, Mag Mag says she watched this movie within the last two months and can't remember much. So four out of ten slow mo hummingbirds. <laughs> <laughs> Engineer twenty one three out of ten data bottoms for me. Uh, yeah. Rob feeling generous after his shenanigans about the disco finale gives it a six point five out of ten. Oh. We never forget, Rob. We never forget. Can we call uh, it row bottoms? Spotted giraffe gives it a four out of ten. Um. I guess Engineer, I guess, gave it a new rating because he didn't like his original. It is one out of ten now. Goes to the oh, final. Oh, oh, damn. Um, damn. Uh, yeah, and then only one ass. Yes, oh, two I, cheeks and, equals and, one butt. And hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Giraffe just called Rob out too. <laughs> Rob, you give four out of yep. ten. That hope is you, part two, but <laughs> six point five to insurrection. Yeah, it's pretty fucked up. Giraffe is coming we're, we're for with, you, Rob. We're kind of with yeah, giraffe. giraffe. Yeah, but, there's uh, it was so much fun to have on that in on our, in our chat. Yes. Oh my god. Uh. <laughs> also, props to Giraffe for uh, taking over the other day in very like short timing. By the way, mm-hmm. thanks, Giraffe. You're the best. Killed it. And sorry, we wrote Mario on the screen instead of Marion because <laughs> autocorrect is... sucks. No, no. <laughs> oh, it was just Mario. Correct. That was just 100 percent my fault for not. It was a Julian type. Out. Out. It was a. If you know anything about when I write an outline. <laughs> True. I always correct it for him before you. There's a lot of typos. So that is fully my bad. I looked my at it. I was like, oh, cool, Mario. She was <laughs> amazing, though. And I gave her, I was like, hey, you have to say this at some point. You got to work it in, which was Lizard Babies. And she Lizard did. Like, babies. I watched it later on because I had to go to sleep in between. But I watched it the next day. And then she got Lizard Babies in twice. And I was like, um, <laughs> Backpack says she can't wait for the Nemesis watch along. I can't wait for it either because y'all are going to hear me defend the hell out of this film. Oh, you like <gasps> Nemesis? Crazy. I said it. I am a Nemesis sympathizer. Julian I isn't I a Nemesis. He's a Nema bro. Mm-hmm. I've seen it once when it came out. Did everybody else see it? Yeah. Which one was um, Nemesis? Romulans. Picard's Maybe Tom Hardy. Oh, is that when the Romulan shit happens? Yeah. No. Sure. Well, depend. Uh, what, what the blue what sh- blue shit. stuff, right? What? Let me Google the movie to see what it, it has. Baby Tom Hardy in it. Oh, <gasps> he's supposed that to be one. like a clone yeah. of him, yeah. but he doesn't Fuck look up. like anything. I haven't seen like that him. since I was like five. Hold on. That's hold what on. I'm saying. I saw it once and it was. Five. <laughs> you were five, five. and two. I don't know. You I know, know what I mean? I like was. some fucking youngness. No, I was I older than five that. Five in 2002. I was just saying, like, no, I was. I was not five. In I was in high school in 2002. Oh, anyway, Julie and I, were I think same age. I think that we should uh, we should wrap up. Me and Hawk were in university. I was eight in 2002, so that's how old I am. Yeah, I know. Um, but for those looking forward to. Our nemesis, um, 
TNG deep dive wrap up that is going to be on Thursday, the 21st at 9 30 PM here on Twitch and YouTube. What, what? So, um, I guess if there's nothing else and nothing anybody needs to plug or you know make mention of, I say thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, one quick plug, one quick thing. Yeah. Patrons, if you're on here right now and watching, and if you haven't yet, there is a patrons-only visible poll we would like you to take about a certain merch project that is otherwise a secret. So please go take a look at that and vote in that poll. Merch, 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 merch. And if you're watching and you like what you see right now, follow us on Twitch. We're almost at 50 subscriber people, which means we can become affiliates. So it's going to be awesome. Hi. And if you follow us on we Twitch, are... also follow us on YouTube. Because it's double We the are fun on the all the one. socials, unlike a certain other individual this week. <laughs> 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 yeah. <Direction> yet. <laughs> hey, okay. oh. We out. So, on behalf of the Strange New Pod crew, I'd like to thank you for joining us tonight. And I'd say live long and prosper. Good night. Mushroom. Mushroom. Long Mushroom. live the Empire. Thanks for beaming into our podcast today. If you want to keep the hailing frequencies open, you can subscribe on Apple and Google Podcasts, YouTube, and Spotify. Like what you hear? Put in a good word with Starfleet and leave us a five-star review.